We're going to get ready for your conceptual unit five test. Number one, convert the following angle to decimal degrees. So we have to take 54, what is this, 43 degrees, 48 minutes, 54 seconds. So I'm going to take my 54 seconds and I'm going to turn it into minutes by dividing by 60. So if I take 54 divided by 60, I get 0.9. That means I have 48.9 minutes that I want to convert to degrees, so divide by 60. 48.9 divided by 60 is 0.815. So now I have 43.815 degrees. All right, this one they want us to convert to uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So we already have 34 whole degrees. I need to figure out how many minutes and how many seconds. So I have 0.27 degrees that I want to turn into um, minutes. So to convert, I'm going to multiply by 60. So if I take 0.27 and I multiply by 60, I get... 16.2 which means I have 16.2 minutes which is 16 whole minutes and 0.2 minutes left over so multiply by 60 0.2 times 60 is 12 which means I have 12 seconds all right so this one says convert to uh, following degree measure to radian measure if you have 90 degrees and you want degrees to go away, you put those on bottom, and I want radians, so I put radians on top, and your conversion is there are pi radians in 180 degrees. Degrees cancel, that gives me 90 pi over 180 radians, which if I reduce that is pi over 2. All right, so this one, again, they want degree to radian measure. I have, first of all, I have to convert to degrees, so 50 minutes divided by 60 gives me 0.833333. So I have 50 50.83 repeating degrees that I want to change to radians. So I put degrees on bottom, radians on top. There's 180 degrees in pi radians. Degrees cancel, and I have 50.83 repeating pi over 180. And they obviously went decimal, so I type in 50.83 repeating divided by, or times pi, times pi divided by 180, and I get... 0.88720903364 and they went to the nearest thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, the two doesn't do anything, so it's 0.887 radians. All right, this one now we're going from radian to degree. So we have 3 pi over 4 radians. If I want radians to go away, I put them on bottom, degrees on top. There are pi radians in 180 degrees. Radians cancel. So I have 3 times 180 times pi over 4 pi on the bottom. The pi's cancel. So I have 3 times 180 divided by 4, and I get 135 degrees. All right, this one says, find the length of the arc S intercepted by the given central angle theta in a circle of radius R. It tells me that theta is 60 and... 60 radians and the radius is 19 miles so I have my measure in radians so I want this formula which says arc length equals radius times theta so arc length equals 60 times 19 so 60 times 19 is 1140 miles Okay, this one says find the radius of the circle in which the central angle is 90 degrees and it intercepts an arc length of 41 kilometers. Uh, theta was given in degrees, so we need this formula. Arc length is pi times radius times theta over 180. 
So they gave me the arc length is 41. They gave me the theta is 90 over 180. So if I multiply by 180, I have 180 times 41 is 7380 equals 90 pi r. So to get radius alone, I divide by 90 pi. Those cancel, and they left this in terms of pi, so I just type in 7380 divided by 90 in math and enter, enter it, and I get 82. So I have 82 over pi is my radius. Okay, again, they said type it in terms of pi, so you don't want to type in divided by 3.14. All right, so this one, it says a central angle theta intercepts arcs S1 and S2 on two concentric circles with radii R1 and R2, respectively. Find the missing information. Okay, so since they don't give us theta, that means I can use whichever one I want. I'm going to go with, oops, I'm going to go with that one because it's easier. So if I go with S equals radius times theta, for my first set of data, I, I know two of the three. If I tried to do the second set, I'd have two I don't know. So I've got to solve the first one first. So this would say that 8 equals 12 times theta. So divide by 12. And theta equals 8 over 12, which if I reduce by 4, I get 2 over 3 equals theta. So I found this. So now that I know that theta equals two-thirds, I can solve for the second missing part. And so if I set it up for the second missing part, S2 equals radius times theta. And if I simplify that, 3 goes into 36, 12 times, 12 times 2 is 24 centimeters. Okay? All right. It says, in the figure to the right, 16 compass bearings are shown. North corresponds to an angle of 0 degrees, and other angles are measured clockwise from north. Find the angle in de degrees that describes the compass bearing. West, northwest, east, northeast, north, northeast. Well, what you have to do is you figure there's 360 degrees in an entire circle. They've cut this up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 pieces. So if I take 360 and I divide it by 16, I get 22.5 degrees. So each one of these bearings is 22.5 degrees. So 22.5 plus another one would be 45, well, north-northeast would be 22.5, northeast would be 45, plus 22.5, that would make this 67.5, plus 22.5 makes that 90, plus 22.5 makes that 112.5, plus 22.5 makes that 135, Plus 22.5 makes that 157.5. Plus 22.5 makes that 180. Plus 22.5 makes that 202.5. Plus 22.5 makes that 225. Plus 22.5 makes that 247.5. Plus 22.5 makes that 270. Plus 22.5 makes that 292.5. Plus 22.5 makes that 315. Plus 22.5 makes that 337.5. Plus 22.5 makes that 360 degrees. So, west, northwest. Where's west, northwest? Is right there. That's 292.5. East northeast is 67.5, and north northeast, where's that? Uh, right here is 22.5. Okay. All right, so this one says two patrol boats leave Cape May at the same time, the same speed, but on different bearings. One has a bearing of 44 degrees 36 minutes, and the other has a bearing of 53 degrees 12 minutes. 
How far apart will they be when they are 23 miles from Cape May? All right, so what they're telling me is that they're each 23 miles out. Okay. Straight north. This angle is 44 degrees, 36 minutes. So 36 minutes divided by 60 is 0.6. So this is 44.6 degrees and 12 divided by 60 makes this 53.2 degrees. Okay, so if I want to figure out how far apart they are, if I could figure out his arc length, the big one, and subtract off this arc length, then wouldn't that leave the distance apart they are? I'm sure it would. So if I do the outside one, his arc length, i got to use this because we're in degrees, the big arc length will be pi times the radius times theta, 53.2 over 180. That will be, we'll call that S1. All right, so if I do that, I have pi times 23 times 53.2 enter divided by 180. You get 21.35584873. And if I do S2, okay, then that one will be pi times the radius times 44.6 over 180. So I got pi times 23 times 44.6 enter divided by 180 enter and I get arc length 2 is 17.9035847 and so if I subtract these two 21.35584873 minus 17.9035847, I'm scared to round, I get approximately 3.45226126. And it says round to the nearest integer as needed. So the 4 won't bump it up, and they're approximately 3 miles apart. That's why you got to be very careful of rounding. If I would have rounded too soon, this might have been a 5, which would have bumped that up to a 4, which, again, technically wouldn't be wrong. It'd be your rounding, but if, if you're going to match math Excel, you got to round like they tell you to. And I'm telling you, don't round until the very end. All right, it says a radial arm saw has a circular cutting blade with a diameter of 10 inches. It spins at 2,300 revolutions per minute. If there are nine cutting teeth per inch on the cutting blade, how many teeth cross the cutting surface each second? All right, so we have a saw with a diameter of 10 inches. So one revolution, which would be a circumference, is pi times the diameter. So one revolution is approximately 31.4, what are we in, inches, okay? So I know that I can convert, if, if this thing is doing 2,300 revolutions per minute, and I want to get to teeth per second, I'm trying to get to teeth per second, all right, first of all, let's get rid of minutes. So to get rid of minutes, I'm going to put minutes on top, and I can go to seconds on the bottom. There are 60 seconds in one minute. So now that I got revolutions per second. I want teeth per second. Well, revolutions, I can get to inches. So to get rid of revolutions and go to inches, it says one revolution is 31.4 inches. That puts me in inches per second, but I want teeth per second. So it says there are nine teeth per inch. So if I want to get rid of inches and turn them into teeth, I use that conversion. There are nine teeth per one inch. That gets rid of inch, and now I'm in teeth per second. So I have 2,300 times 31.4 times 9, enter, divided by 60, and I get 10833. I think I rounded too much.
because they got the 0.49 and mine came out perfectly. See what I mean by rounding? Alright, if you do 5 times 10, see if I would have not rounded this very much, it would have been 31.4159265. So if I type that in, 2300, oops, I'm not messed up, well darn it, pi times 10 times 2300 times 9 divided by 60, and there you get the point four nine. See what I mean by rounding? If you use all those digits, you get the 0.49. I just used 31.4, and I didn't get the 0.49. So be careful on rounding, guys. All right, it says point C and D are 889 statute miles apart. How far apart are C and D in nautical miles? Assume the radius of the Earth at the equator is approximately 3956 statute miles. Okay, it says point C and D. They are 889 statute miles, and I want to convert to nautical miles. So if I want statute miles to go away, I put on the bottom. I want nautical miles on top. You can use either one of these. It doesn't matter. I'll just use this one. One statute mile is 0.87 nautical miles. So SMs cancel. I have 889 times 0.87, and I get... 773.43 and it says to the nearest mile so 4 won't bump it up and it's 773 alright <coughs> it says assume that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle satisfying the given conditions evaluate the remaining trigonometric functions so in this right triangle if this is theta cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so if I get the other leg, I'm going to have 5 squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So leg squared equals 64 minus 25, which is 39. So leg squared equals 39. Square root, square root. The other leg is the square root of 39. So sine would be opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 39 over 8. Tangent would be opposite, square root of 39, over adjacent, which is 5. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, so that would be 8 over the square root of 39, but we have to rationalize, which gives me 8 square roots of 39 over 39. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse is 8, adjacent is 5. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Adjacent is 5. Opposite is the square root of 39. Rationalize. And I get 5 square roots of 39 over 39. Okay. Alright. This one, they want the exact values, which means they don't want you to simplify, I mean, go decimal. They want sine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4, tangent of pi over 4. Now, they want you to memorize the 45, 45, 90 triangle, but since we've already learned that sine is y, and if you're in the unit circle, sine is y, cosine is x, and tangent is y over x. So if I go to pi over 4, I'm right here, x is the square root of 2 over 2, y is the square root of 2 over 2. So sine is y, which is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine is x, which is the square root of 2 over 2. Tangent is y over x, which is the square root of 2 over 2, divided by the square root of 2 over 2. This is divide. You I mean, you can do the math if you want to. Keep, change, flip. Everything cancels, which is 1. Or you can say anything divided by itself is 1. All right, this one, sine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6, tangent of pi over 6. Again, we're in the unit circle. Sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x. So if I go to pi over 6, x is the square root of 3 over 2, y is 1 half. So sine is 1 half, cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. Tangent is y over x. Keep, change, flip. 
the twos cancel and I have one over the square root of three rationalize which gives me the square root of three over three okay find the values of the following trigonometric functions this you're just typing in the calculator please make sure that you are in the right mode if they give you degrees make sure your degree or your mode is in degree or you will not get the right answers all right this one says use a calculator to find the approximate value since we've given values of pi you need to make sure that your mode is in radians and then you type it in okay all right this one now for cosecant secant and cotangent you do not use the the blue things above sine, cosine, and tangent. Inverse sine, inverse cos, inverse tangent is not the same as cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay? So to type cosecant is 69 degrees, you're going to have to make sure you're in degrees. And then you're going to type 1 divided by um, sine 69. So if I type that in, let me check my mode. Oh, I was in radians. So go over to degrees. And then we're going to go to uh, 1 divided by sine of 69. And you get the 1.0711 blah 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 blah. To type secant of 69, you're going to type 1 divided by cosine 69. And to type cotangent, you're going to type in 1 divided by tangent 69 and then you'll get these correct answers all right so use a calculator to find this again you're going to have to make sure you're in radians and then you would type one divided by tangent pi over three but make sure you're in radians all right so this one says find the exact value of theta so here they're telling me i'm in the unit circle Okay, tangent is y divided by x. Okay, since tangent is positive, well, I got to be in the first quadrant up here. Okay, so let's see. It might be 30 degrees if 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2 equals this. So if I try that, 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3, that would give me 1 over the square root of 3 rationalize and I get square root of 3 over 3 which is what I wanted which means that's my angle my answer is 30 degrees in degrees and pi over 6 in radians okay cotangent is the square root of 3 okay cotangent is x over y so again I mean I can see the answer but let's say that and this just happens to be the first one that I try all right, if I try this and I do x square root of 3 over 2 divided by y, keep, change, flip, I get the square root of 3, which is what they got. So that's the right angle, 30 degrees. Okay, this one, find the exact um, value. For cosecant, it's 1 over y. So I'm looking for... 1 over y that gives me this value. So if I tried the 30 again, I would have 1 over 1 half, keep, change, flip, that would give me 2. That didn't work, so not 30 degrees. If I tried 45 degrees and I did 1 divided by y, that would be keep, change, flip, that would give me 2 over the square root of 2, rationalize. 2 square roots of 2 over 2. That's not what they got, so it's not 45. So now I'll try 60. 1 over y would be 1 over the square root of 3 over 2. Keep, change, flip. I get 2 over the square root of 3, rationalize. And that's 2 square roots of 3 over 3, which is what this is. So theta has to be, I don't know if put percent there, so so theta has to be 60 degrees. Okay, so find the exact value. Cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. Well, cosine is x. So I'm looking for an x coordinate. That's the square root of 3 over 2, which is this one, which is 30 degrees. 
Okay, solve the right triangle shown where A is 10.9 and alpha is 24.9. Okay, so it says find the measure of angle B. Well, in a right triangle, any triangle, the three angles add up to 180. So if I take 180 minus 90 minus 24.9, you get 65.1. Okay, so I also know that degree. Now we got to find the length of side B. Well, if I use this angle, if I stand here, I'm looking for adjacent and I know opposite. What uses adjacent and opposite is tangent. So if I do tangent of 24.9, it will be the opposite, which is 10.9, over adjacent, which is B. So to solve for B, I'm going to multiply by B and I get B times tangent 24.9 equals 10.9. To get B alone, I'm going to divide by tan of 24.9 and B equals, make sure your mode is back in degrees, mine is. So I'm going to type 10.9 divided by 10 of 24.9 and I get 23.4820 and they said to the nearest tenth that makes it 23.5. And now I need to find C which is the hypotenuse so if I use opposite and hypotenuse that would be sine, oops, that would be sine. So if I do sine of 24.9, that is opposite, 10.9 over hypotenuse is C. So to get C alone, I'm going to multiply by C. I get C times sine 24.9 equals 10.9. And to get C alone, I'm going to divide by sine 24.9. And I get C equals 10.9 divided by sine 24.9. And I get C equals 25.888. And if I round, that's 25.9. Yeah, yeah, that's solving a right triangle. Okay, so this one says find the distance from A to C across the gorge. So they want me to find that. So from here, I'm looking for opposite, and I know adjacent, that's going to be tangent. So if I tan 15, that's going to be x over 130. To get x alone, I'm going to multiply by 130. And I get x equals 130 times tan 15. And I get 34.8333, yada, yada, to the nearest two decimals, two places. The three won't bump it up. And I get 34.83 feet. Okay, it says determine whether the two angles are coterminal. They're coterminal if they differ by a multiple of 360. So if I say 43 goes into 1483. No, I don't want to do that. 30, what are they coterminal? Well, you've got two choices. You could either do 43 and just keep adding 360. So 43 plus 360 is 403 plus 360 plus 360 plus 360. And I got to 1483. So if I added 360. I don't remember how many times I did that. Um, I think it's So yes, they are coterminal because they differ by a multiple of 360. All right. So this one says, assume that alpha is an angle in standard position whose terminal side contains the point 5, negative 12. Find the exact values of the following functions. All right, so this would be 5 over 12 down. So my angle is down here in the fourth quadrant, okay? 
And let's see, this would be, whatever this is, is positive 5, and this is negative 12. Because this point is 5, negative 12, right there. Okay, so if I find the hypotenuse, I'm going to have 5 squared plus negative 12 squared equals the hypotenuse squared. That's 25 plus 144 is 169, which makes my hypotenuse 13. Okay, so now if I find sine theta, it's opposite, which is negative 12 over hypotenuse is 13. Cosine is adjacent, which is 5 over hypotenuse is 13. Tangent is opposite, negative 12 over adjacent, 5. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, so that's going to be 13 over negative 12. Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, so that's going to be 13 over 5. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite, and that's going to be adjacent is 5, opposite is negative 12. Yeah? All right, it says state the sine of sine t in the following interval. From pi to 3 pi over 2. Here's pi, here's 0, pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, but it's pi, 3 pi over 2. So if we're between pi and 3 pi over 2, we're in quadrant 3. And in quadrant 3, sine is negative. Okay? Find the signs of the six trigonometric functions for the given angle. 213 degrees. This would be 180. This would be 270. So 213, again, we're in quadrant 3. So sine is negative. Cosine is negative. Tangent's positive. Cosecant's negative. Secant's negative. Cotangent is positive. Okay. Use reference angles to find the exact values of the following expression. Sine of 300 degrees. 300 degrees is right here. And sine is y, which is negative square root of 3 over 2. Secant of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is here. Secant is 1 over x, so 1 over the square root of 2 over 2. Keep, change, Flip, rationalize, square root of 2, square root of 2 would give me 2 square roots of 2 over 2. The 2's cancel, and I get the square root of 2. Okay, evaluate without using a calculator, but using ratios in a reference triangle. 19 pi over 6. Well, 6 goes into 19 three whole times. Take away 18 leaves 1. So you're going to have three whole pies plus another pi over 6. So 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 1 pi over 6 would be one more step, which would be right here. Okay, so there's my reference angle. They want me to do tangent. Tangent is y over x. So if I take y, which is negative 1 half, divided by x, which is negative square root of 3 over 2, keep, change, flip. The 2's cancel, I get positive 1 over the square root of 3, rationalize. Why are they getting a negative? Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry, 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 sorry. This, this was negative. This was negative 19 pi over 6. So here would be positive 19 pi over 6. I would have to reflect, which puts me up here. This would be negative pi over 6, or negative, negative 19 pi over 6. Okay, so now the y would be square root of 3 over 2 divided by x, which is negative 1 half. P, change, flip, the 2's cancel, and I get a negative square Now what the heck am I doing? What the heck? Okay. Maybe I should just start over. Sometimes the best thing to do is just start over. I got myself confused here. Erase over. Alright. 19 pi over 6. 6 goes into 19 three whole times. Take away 18, which leaves 1. So we have three whole pi's plus another pi over 6. 
if we go negative, this would be 1, 2, 3, and another pi over 6 would be right here. There we go. Hamilton. Sorry. Alright, so if I do that, then these are my coordinates, and tangent is y over x, so I have 1 half divided by negative square root of 3 over 2. Keep, change, flip. Those cancel, and I get a negative 1 over the square root of 3. Rationalize. And I get a negative square root of 3 over 3. Alright. Find sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta for the given quadrantal angle. 630 degrees. 630 minus 360 is 270. So what this would be, I'm going to do the reflection, it would go one whole time around. So there would be 360 plus another 270, which would put me down here. But that would be a positive. So if I reflect, that puts me up here. So my coordinates are 0, 1 on my terminal side, which means sine is y, 1. Cosine is x, 0. Tangent. If I do y divided by x, it is undefined, because 0 is on the bottom. Okay? Alright, same here for 23 pi. That's an odd number of pi's. This side will be an even number of pi's. This side will be an odd number of pi's. So you can go around and make yourself dizzy if you want, but I'm going to end up right here. So my terminal side passes through negative 1, 0. Sine is y, which is 0. Cosine is x, is negative 1. Tangent is y over x, which is going to be 0 divided by negative 1, which is 0. And I have 0 on the top, just not on the bottom. 35. Sine theta, tan theta, if cosine theta is 2 fifths and cotangent theta is positive. So they're telling me that both cosine is positive and cotangent is positive. Positive cosine, negative cosine, negative cosine, positive cosine. So it's out of these two. Cotangent has to be positive. Here it's negative, so we are in quadrant 1. So draw an angle somewhere in quadrant 1. Drop an altitude, and it says that cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so if I get the other leg, I have 5 squared plus, no I don't. I have 2 squared plus the other leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So leg squared equals 25 minus 4, which is 21. So the leg, the other leg is the square root of 21. So to find sine, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is the square root of 21. Hypotenuse is 5. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is the square root of 21. Adjacent is 2. Okay, secant theta um, and cosecant theta if cotangent is negative. So I need a negative cotangent, which would be here and here. And cosine is negative. Well, cosine here is positive, so that's out. Cosine is negative, so I'm in quadrant 2. So drop an altitude. And it says that cotangent, and cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So adjacent to me is negative 11 and opposite of me is positive 60. This one has to be negative because it's going left. This one has to be positive because it's going up. So if I find the other leg, I mean the hypotenuse, I have 60 squared plus negative 11 squared equals hypotenuse squared. 60 squared plus 121. Um, so the hypotenuse would be the square root of 3721. And apparently I don't need that. Yeah, because they want secant. Well, secant is reciprocal to cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And cosecant would be hypotenuse over opposite. 
So for here, my hypotenuse. Wait. What the heck are we doing here? Cotangent is adjacent over opposite, right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And we're in quadrant two, right? Cosine's negative, cotangent's negative. Yeah, I'm in the right quadrant. What did I do wrong? Those are both the way. Oh, I got the square root of 37, 21, and 61. Should have taken square root. There's your 61. Okay. So, secant is going to be the hypotenuse, which is 61 over adjacent, which is negative 11, which makes that negative. And cosecant would be um, hypotenuse, which is 61 over opposite, which would be 60. Okay. 37. Evaluate using the period of the function. Well, again, this is going to be an even number of pi's. You can go around 18,744 times if you want to. You're going to be really dizzy and you're going to end up right back at the start because there's your even number of pi's. And then you go another pi over 6, which puts you here. Sine is y. Y is 1 half. There's your answer. And, oops. Skip one. And the last one, it says an aircraft flying at an altitude of 8,000 feet passes directly over, so we've got an altitude of 8,000 feet, and we've got a plane up here, directly over a group of vacationers hiking at 7,300 feet. If theta is the angle of elevation from the hikers to the aircraft, find the distance d from the group to the aircraft for the given angle. An aircraft flying at an altitude of 8,000 feet. Oh, okay, so if the plane is up here at 8,000 feet, but the hikers are, t are hiking at 7,300 feet, then this distance is 8,000, take away 7,300, you get 700 feet. So, and they want the distance between the group in the aircraft, so they're looking for this. Alright, so they're saying if this angle is 45, well that's going to be opposite and hypotenuse, so it's sine. So if I do sine 45, that will give me 700 over x. So to get x alone, I'm going to multiply by x, and then divide by sine 45. Make sure you're in degrees. And if I do 700 divided by sine 45, I get x equals 989.949, rounded to 0.95. If I am at the 90 degree angle, that would be here, all right, the distance between, the, if, if they're standing here at the 90 degree angle in the plane, the distance, the, the, distance between them is the 700 feet and if this angle was 130 degrees I know it's not drawn right but if that was 130 degrees you would do sine 130 equals 700 over x alright so then I would multiply by x and divide by sine 130 and x equals 700 divided by sine 130 and you get 913.785 which rounds to 0.79 that is it happy studying and i will see you next time